I am Rajeshwari, student from Portion Centrum Ulich. My question is, why do some particles like gluons do not have mass? Also, have they been observed experimentally? Hi, Rajesh. So you ask why um, do some particles like gluons um, have no mass? Why are gluons massless? And have they been observed experimentally? Well, the answer to why they're massless is very interesting. Uh, they're massless for the same reason that quanta of light, photons, are massless. Why light is massless. Why it travels at the speed of light. Gluons are massless for the same reason. Both electromagnetism and quantum chromodynamics are consequences of a deep symmetry of nature. We call it gauge invariance. Uh, it is a local symmetry of nature, which in effect um, tells us that the space of labels of particles, in the case of charged particles, um, it's a very simple um, phase of the wave function of charged particles. In the case of quarks or gluons, it's a space of colored labels, that, these, that the laws of physics are invariant under local rotations in that space. And that beautiful local symmetry of nature leads to the dynamical laws for both light on the one hand and gluons on the other hand. It is the underlying symmetry of the theory of electromagnetism on the one hand and that of quantum chromodynamics on the other hand. So it is really impossible or very difficult to imagine that the photon, the quanta of light, was, had a very little mass. Uh, that would totally break this symmetry. And for the same reason, it's impossible to imagine that gluons have a very little mass. Now, if the symmetry is there, and we believe it is, these particles must be truly massless. Now, if they're massless, like light rays, why haven't we seen them streaming throughout the universe? Well, the reason we haven't seen them is that unlike light rays, gluons have charge as well. Not only are they the carriers of the force between charged particles like quarks, they also carry charge themselves. So they pull on each other. Gluons are attracted to gluons and they're held together by the strong nuclear force which gets to be quite strong at very small, small distances. So the gluons, much like the quarks, are trapped within nuclei. The proton is made out of, inside the proton there are quarks and gluons moving around and the gluons never get out. Even though they're massless and are traveling at the speed of light, they're also held together by this very strong force and never get out of the proton. That's why you've never seen a gluon directly. But indirectly, we do see gluons. When we smash together two protons, what happens is that the quarks inside those bags of quarks and gluons collide, produce gluons. Those gluons are shot out of the collision, but they can't get out freely themselves because they're attracted to all the other gluons and quarks, and what comes out is a jet of ordinary particles, which are totally neutral, have none of this net charge. But we see the jets that the gluon turn has turned into. And by, by observing the properties of these jets, we can tell that those jets came from one single gluon. So in effect, in these experiments, we see the gluons, or the, more precisely, the jets into which they, be, which they eventually become. And in that way, we indirectly see gluons.